biblical times. Thank you so much for having us to your home. Yes, it is. Your home. And, uh, and we feel that. We feel that we come home. Every every time we came, those his companions would always doubt him. You know, the doubt would always be there. Is he just a human being or is he something more than that? Mm -hmm. And then he had to, once in a while, he would prove that, you know, I'm something more than that. Mm -hmm. And uh, there are occasions in the life of Jesus, where when they were crossing the lake of Galilee, mm -hmm. and the storm blew up, and Jesus was asked the same. And Peter said, Master, wake up, wake up, we are going to swim. <laughs> and Jesus got up and ordered the lake to be calm and it. That was the time when they realized that he is more than a human being. He said to them, you of little faith. <laughs> <laughs> and I think he's speaking to all of us. And for all time. Mm -hmm. And it was the same lake on which he walked. The lake of Galilee. Yes. <clears throat> I think it was the same occasion. Mm -hmm. Really? He tested Peter's faith. He said, if you believe, then you can do it. And mm -hmm. Peter started. And then his faith flagged and he and started, started sinking. sinking. I remember that. Right. And then 2,000 years later, an American tourist went to visit the Holy Land. And he wanted to cross the Lake of Galilee. Hmm. And the people were charged in such a heavy fare <laughs> that he thought to himself, no wonder Jesus decided. <laughs> 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 there was a story of a, of a saint who uh, one of his disciples said, if you're a master then you should be able to walk across water. Mm -hmm. And uh, the master said something like, why would I do that when just a couple of pennies a ferry will take me across? Yeah. <laughs> This was the story narrated by beloved Baba to the Mandir. Mm. Uh, when the talk came about miracles mm -hmm. and uh, to show the utter, utter worthlessness of miracles, this is what Baba told us, mm. of a master and a disciple. No, a master and his disciples reached a certain spot they wanted to cross over. Mm -hmm. And uh, an advanced wayfarer was there. And he says to that master, what the hell are you waiting for? Come on, let's cross the, uh, the river or whatever. And he walked over it. Uh -huh. Master didn't say anything. In the meantime, that small ferry boat, row boat came along. The master and his disciple uh, got in the boat, went to the other side. And when they got off, the master gave that man eight and as 50 paisas. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And looking at that advanced uh, way that he said, that was the valley of the miracle you broke. No! <laughs> no that's a good Very good. <laughs> that's a problem. He zings it right in there, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he puts the he puts the exact value, not an approximate value. <laughs> yeah. You know, yesterday you told us the story of the elephant who garlanded Baba at the yeah. circus. Mm. Was that in Pune? No, no. Uh, if I told you to go by a car or a bus mm. from Nagar to Pune, you come to a village by the name of Chas. C-H-A-S, Chas. Mm. Now, of course, it's a grown big, you know, with buildings and this and that. Mm. But in those days, it was a small village. Mm. And the circus was performed at place. Mm -hmm. This is a different elephant from the one he visited at the zoo? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Different yes. elephant. Wow. Yes. That was in Pune. Mm -hmm. That was uh, in a, a park called Peshwa Park. Mm -hmm. And that park had a small miniature uh, zoo. Like. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. And that elephant was mostly being used to give jo joy rides to the children. Oh, okay. mm -hmm. And Baba would uh, visit that park. Mm -hmm. And whenever he went there, he would have a couple of buns in his hand. Once or twice when I was mm -hmm. uh, on leave in India. He had taken us there. Oh, yeah. And Baba himself would feed her. She was a female. Mm -hmm. She lived for many years and then uh, 
when they old age and she departed. Mm. Her keeper had become so attached to that elephant that soon after she went, the keeper also passed away. Oh. He couldn't live without her. Oh, mm. so sweet. My elder daughter was very little, mm -hmm. and Baba told me to take her mm. to For see the elephant. Mm -hmm. And he specifically said that you give her a packet of biscuit mm. and tell her to give that biscuit to the elephant. So I gave mm. her a biscuit mm. to give it to the elephant. Mm -hmm. So she just broke out a itsy bitsy corner of the biscuit and put it in his trunk when he put out his oh. trunk. And then when she I ate the rest. <laughs> she ate the rest herself? Not much. But when we went back to Guru Prasad, Baba asked that, did you give uh, the elephant <laughs> the biscuit. She said, yes, Baba, I gave oh. biscuit. She was not lying. But this then I... Mirror? Yeah, my mirror. Mirror. Mirror Arjan. Mirror Arjan. And then Baba asked me, how much did she give? Did she <laughs> give the whole biscuit? Uh -huh. I said, no, Baba. She broke the smallest corner of uh -huh. the biscuit uh -huh. and gave it to the elf. Uh -huh. I told her, put all that whole biscuit mm -hmm. in the and I have taken, it is very auspicious to offer a coconut to mm. the elephant mm. in India. So I have taken the coconut also along with the packet of biscuit. Mm. So he broke the coconut. Mm. They had the coconut in their trunk mm. and break it. Wow. And then he puts it in his mouth and takes out the shell. Wow. That was so fascinating yeah. to the little girl. Uh -huh. Oh, she says, see, see, you take such a lot of trouble to take out that shell and he's doing it without his hands. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the way we eat soft shell crabs. Smack. <laughs> yeah. um, yesterday you told us the story of the village wrestler who came to Baba. Could you tell us again what was his name? I do not his name. I know his surname. Oh. Patil. Patil. P-A-T-I-L. Patil. When you hear such a surname, mm -hmm. you immediately mm -hmm. know that that surname means he was a leader in the village. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Of course, now, now we are so becoming so common. So common. So but you Americans uh, should be fully aware of it because yes. yeah. there are so many examples in America. America. Yeah. Now, yeah. actually, I think Americans have found a new word mm -hmm. for the word motel. Mm -hmm. They call them hotel because all these motels are being ruled by these hotels. That's <laughs> funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. Hey, quack! <laughs> Jingo, quack, what happened? Mm -hmm. Nothing happened. So, and, and where was that? I know it was in the early days, you said. In Mehrabad. That was in Mehrabad. Mm. The, 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 the village that you see here, that is Arundam village. Mm. So, um, he was from Arundam. Mm. Mm. This village over here. Yeah. And it was when Baba first arrived in this mm. area. Ah, in the early years, uh, this place had not been given the name of Mehrabad. Yeah. Uh, later on, it was not. And if I'm not mistaken, these names were given by uh, Bariya Kaka, mm -hmm. one of Nenavir mm -hmm. Baba's very close manly. Mm -hmm. uh, and he named this place Merava and the other one at Me Merava. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure, but I think it was uh, mm -hmm. Bariya Kaka. Mm -hmm. Merava means Meher flourishing. Uh -huh, flourishing. Mm -hmm. And Azad means free. Free. Meher free. But uh, the thing that we have to remember and watch uh, is the similarity in the two elements. Mm -hmm. All other uh, signs of Muhammad have vanished. All, you know, places where he was there and all, nothing has remained. Only two places, Mecca and Medina. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The same, Guru Prasad is gone, Bindra House is gone, That's all true. other places are now, no more. Mm -hmm. That's true. But Merabad and Meraza, both true. letters, both places beginning with the letter mm -hmm. M. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like and, America, America. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. and another thing that he always drew my attention to was that uh, even in small details history repeats itself. Mm. The master of Jesus was uh, John the Baptist, mm. yes. a very strong giant of a man, yes. hot-tempered, mm. 
would abuse people if they molested him or they arrested him. Mm. Yeah. And he would wear nothing but a burlap sack. Uh, yeah. yeah. Same with the Pasni yeah. Maharaj. Yeah. Mm, a true. huge man. That's true. Very, you know, fiery type. Yeah. Man. <laughs> um, <laughs> not easily approachable. No. Yes. No. No. But Did you ever it is you? always, you know, if he wants you, then no. Then no one could be more loving than him. Yes. But if he doesn't want you, yeah. more than Gandhi approached him. <laughs> Out. <laughs> <laughs> <You're right. laughs> and he kept him waiting and waiting and, you know, the people accompanying Mahatma Gandhi, because of their ego all this happened. Yeah. They were all the time saying to Gandhi, it is he who should be coming to you, no, yeah. you should have gone to him, uh -huh. like that. And then when he came, Upasni Maharaj, he deliberately opened it himself. <laughs> and oh, he says, funny. you want to take, you want independence? <laughs> like hell you are getting it. <laughs> and then he walked away. Wow. And Gandhi later told Baba, I cannot see the greatness in him. And Baba said, the greatness of Upasni Maharaj, you can't even imagine. Yes. Wow. But I must give credit to Mahatma Gandhi for one thing. Mm. 1931, when the, when the round table conference was taking place, Mahatma right. uh, uh, was traveling on that ship, Rajputana. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, that ship touched Karachi. Mm -hmm. Those days, one, it, it was one un, undivided India. Mm -hmm. oh. And the mayor of Karachi was a Parsi gentleman by the name of uh, Jamshed Neta. Right. He was a, a very noble soul, and actually I'm told that miracles are attributed to him. He was deeply involved in theosophy. Thank you so much. So, he went visiting beloved Baba. Now at that time Gandhi was in prison in Delhi, because, you know, yeah. making trouble for the British had put him in prison. And Baba told uh, Jamshed Mehta that, uh, for my book, it is important that Gandhi should also join this round table conference. Mm -hmm. Baba uttered these words and the British government made announcement that they are going to have Gandhi for the conference also. Uh -huh. And then Jamshed Mehta began to think, this man says it and the thing has happened. Mm -hmm. And a special train with one carriage and one engine ran all the way from Delhi to Karachi mm -hmm. in order to catch that ship on time. Wow. And then when uh, Gandhi boarded that ship, Yamshed Mehta sent him a telegram on the ship that on this ship there travels a man by the name of Mehr Baba. Mm -hmm. Meet him, you will gain a lot from him. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is how the meeting took That's place. That's how the meeting took place. Baba and Gandhi. Wow. I never heard those details. That's and then, it is there that Mehr Baba showed him that book which is as yet not to be found. Mm -hmm. And Baba told him, don't read the whole book, mm -hmm. only the pages I show you. Mm -hmm. And Gandhi was so impressed, he told Baba, manifest yourself, now is the time. For you. He said, I will do my things, my way, not your way. Yes. And it was at that time that he also told him, break the shackles of this political binding, mm. join me, and I promise you that I will grant independence to India. Mm. But the man did not listen. Mm -hmm. oh. He did but, not keep his promise. Oh. Mm. But there is one thing, That's why we are so when the ship reached the Tilbury Docks, you. the reporters we came, you know, yeah. Yeah. like where we are today, yes, yes, the yes, reporters yes. came to interview Gandhi. Yeah. And they must give him the credit that Gandhi told the reporters mm. that do not waste your time interviewing me. Mm. That travels on the ship a man who, if he so wishes, can command the sun to rise in the west mm. and set in the east. Wow. Go and interview him. Wow. They asked him, who is it? Mehr Baba and Kevin number so and so. Mm -hmm. Baba by that time had already. <laughs> 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 But Gandhi Gandhi did say yes, that. He did admit the truth. Oh, yes. beautiful. That he travels a man on this ship who, if he so wishes, can command the sun to rise in the west and set in the east. Unbelievable. Wow. Unbelievable. He had a lot of respect. Wow. And yet he made a promise and just keep it. You know, the people around him. Yes, that's, that's it. They do not let him do it. No, no pressure. <clears throat> and this is arranged by him. Everything is arranged by him. He tells Gandhi, mm. under no circumstances mm. have a divided India. Oh, yes. mm. And yet in 41 or 42, at Mehrabad or Satar, I don't know the location, mm -hmm. Baba was sitting with his companions, Dr. Gani, who is a Muslim, mm -hmm. and Dr. Nilu, who is a Hindu. Mm -hmm. 
Never before a beloved Baba done a thing like that. He, you know, put sparks to both of them. Running down Hindus, then running down Muslims. <laughs> and these two fled. They became angry, you know. He's a, he's a master player. He played on them beautifully. They became angry. They totally forgot in whose presence they are sitting. They began to use words. <laughs> Even a fish of <laughs> Even that was not then. Baba kept on fingering them. Till they stood up and were about to give blows to each other. That is when Baba intervened and told them to embrace each other. Wow. And when they sat down, Baba made this cryptic remark, My work is done. Mm -hmm. wow. Finished. Years later they realized that the work was the partition of India. And yet the same man is telling Gandhi, under no circumstances I'll uh, accept the condition of a divided India. But the work was already done. It was already done by him. Yeah. Isn't it also true that, that on the SS Rajputana that India's fate was, was sealed by Gandhi Mini Bada? That basically that was that was um, that that was initiated then. On the yes, there were certain orders that Baba had given Gandhi, mm -hmm. uh, but Gandhi in his uh, biography has declared that there was no such uh, thing yeah. as a disciple-master relationship. Mm -hmm. But till the end of his days, Gandhi used to observe silence on a Monday, mm -hmm. and that order was given by Baba. Mm -hmm. If only Gandhi had accepted this fact. Mm -hmm then the lot of this country would have been much, much better. The history would have been absolutely different. Yeah, different. different history. It could very well be that by, by instigating that argument, uh, Baba saved many thousands of lives instead. Quite possible. Yeah, yeah, quite possible. Yeah. But before this partition happened, yes. Baba walked the place where thousands of people were slaughtered. Mm -hmm. That Place. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Baba said that there will be a river of blood flowing mm -hmm. over it on this land. Wow. All this uh, in the final analysis it has no meaning whatsoever. Yes. No meaning. Nothing is nothing. Nothing is nothing. Mm -hmm. And that is why one of my cousins, my uh, mother's father had married two times. Mm -hmm. like, like oh no, my oh, Very good, thank you. Mm -hmm. So, by his first wife, he had uh, one son and one daughter. I'm not sure, mm -hmm. but the son had a couple of children, and one of the uh, ch uh, children's name was Rhoda, a girl. Mm -hmm. Very intelligent. Uh, she had done a senior Cambridge those days. Mm -hmm. You know, during the British time, the paper would be sent to England. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. very very clever. God knows something happened and she went into a depression or something. Mm -hmm. My poor cousin in there and she died in a mental hospital mm -hmm. in a very poor state. Mm -hmm. But that is not the point. She was uh, staying with us in our ancestral home in Nagar, mm -hmm. where the entire family lived together. Mm -hmm. In her own way she was not uh, harmful. <coughs> she, if you told her to come on, Rhoda, dust the furniture, she would keep on doing that all the time. Mm -hmm. Like, forgive me. And we, uh, I was born and brought up in Bombay, but uh, I would, we would all come to our ancestral house, mm -hmm. you know, during summer vacations. Mm -hmm. And I was there, and one day, Rhoda was standing before the picture of beloved Baba. Yes. And she would do that, you know, stand there hours together. Mm -hmm. More out of mischief, you know, no, no real intention of knowing something. Mm -hmm. I asked her, Rhoda, what are you looking at? Mm -hmm. She had a very soft voice. And for a minute or two she did not, did not even bother to answer. And I was just about to leave mm -hmm. when she said something that has lasted me my entire life, from a child to 74 years today. And she said, Jisko khuda mila, usko sab kuch mila. One who has found God has found everything. Mm -hmm. Has found everything. And many years later when I became interested <coughs> in Sufism, I read Masnavi by Jalal and then drew me. Mm. And in that there is the same thing. Mm. If you have everything but not him, mm. you then you have nothing. Mm. If you have nothing but you have him, then you have everything. Mm. 
What is the story of your own conviction? Now, the, the question is this. You, you were brought up in an environment and in circumstances where Meher Baba was a presence. But uh, the question I'm asking is your own personal conviction of his avatar. Can you tell us how that dawned upon you? Uh, no human being ever turns to God unless and until the world starts giving him, giving him a few kicks on him. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the same thing that happened to me. Mm -hmm. In the year 82, my motion, I gave up my Sikh career somewhere in 78, 79. Mm -hmm. And I was helping Roshan with the tailoring work. Mm -hmm. There was a time when Roshan used to export uh, each month more than 2,000 garments to Villa Page in Australia. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, the name of that firm was Mayor Handcrafts Hand 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 in Australia. Mm -hmm. wow. So, what are they talking about? So, about yes. your conviction of his avatar. <coughs> So, I was helping Roshan with her work, then uh, from 72, 72 to 79 she did that and then the Australians stopped giving us orders. Things were not going smoothly, mm -hmm. uh, difficulties with the Australian government and the Indian mm -hmm. government. So in the meantime, Roshan had established a name in Pune. Mm -hmm. So the Rajinish people approached us and we were then working for Rajinish. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, uh, he was a guru who was set up in the Pacific Northwest. Mm -hmm. Many scandals, sexual uh, activity, etc. in the ashram. Right. But they he had, had a center here in Pune, right? Yeah. Yeah. He, he, had, he had various names. Mm -hmm. In the beginning he used to call himself Bhagavan Rashni. Bhagavan, yeah. Then later on he changed it to Osho. Osho I think is a, J a Japanese term mm -hmm. for the master. Mm -hmm. Whatever, it, that is not the point. <laughs> so we were working for him. Mm -hmm. Then he left for America. Yeah. Overnight. Overnight. Because, uh, as my brother said, the scandal had become so big yeah. that the local pub, shall I switch off the fan now? Oh, no, no, fine. Uh, fine, thank you. I didn't because of the tea getting cold. Okay. It's no, so no, no, fine. fine. Very if you like the fan, no, I don't mind no, at all. No, I'm no, very comfortable. Anyway, so then, uh, yeah. And uh, we were working for uh, him, uh, working people. And uh, then he left. And then we had nothing left. So we would, you know, Hello. get few orders here, yes. few orders there. Mm -hmm. In short, Roshan's tailoring business huh? had come way down. Mm -hmm. And there were times when uh, we would not even earn enough money to pay the rent of the shop. The only reason we survived was because of my savings from my sea job. Mm -hmm. One day, uh, and I had a, a, a scoop with a side cover, mm -hmm. and I would deliver the news. Supposing you had ordered me some shirts of this, they're ready, I could go and deliver it to you. And I got involved in an accident. An old man, about 85 or so, even older. Uh, I do not know what happened, but. Uh, I have a feeling that my sidecar struck him uh -huh. and he fell. Mm. I'm not very sure about all this. Then I picked him up and fortunately on that particular main road there were many private uh, clinics and hospitals. Mm -hmm. I took him to one of them, told the doctor, gave my address and all mm -hmm. and that uh, and to take care of him. And I gave the doctor my address also. And uh, about 2 o'clock in the morning he died. Mm -hmm. That old man. So the police now got involved and uh, they went to the clinic and the doctor said, This is the man who brought him and here is his address. Mm -hmm. So about 2 o'clock in the morning they came to our house and I said, Yeah. They took me to the police station. Mm -hmm. Basically, I'm a very nervous man. Fortunately, my younger daughter Dolly was there, who was in the meantime studying law and all. Mm -hmm. So she accompanied me and then. And, uh, you know, typical bullshit of the Indian police force. Mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. and so, another friend of mine, who was friendly with an, an inspector, mm -hmm. one on a higher position than the one police inspector had yeah. arrested me. So that inspector told my friend, tell him to <laughs> 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 
Tell them to what? Brian. 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 Uh, <coughs> how could I express it? I had never been in a bloody police station even to ask the directions of the day. <laughs> I said, sir, I mean, uh, if there is any, anything you need. <laughs> you are trying to measure my honesty. Oh my God, I said, I am talking to Raja Arishchandra. He was sending you a message. He was sending you a message. Oh my God! What? What? what I, I missed the line here. He said, "He said you're trying to measure my honesty." Yes. And you said, "No, I didn't say anything. I kept my mouth shut." Oh, okay. Mouth. Because but trying sure. to be extra smart with this people, you yeah. would get in a big trouble. Right. Yeah. And then the whole thing began. It took nearly two years and more oh, wow. for the decision to come. Oh. I would get a date on such and such a date. The hearing will be there. Oh. Nothing would happen. And. As I said, Roshan's business was way down, mm. we had no money. Mm. And every time I reported, that clerk and that, uh, that uh, pune or whatever you call it, you know, that local staff, as, as I'm leaving, I can good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Bloody hell, I said, what's going on here? Mm -hmm. And then uh, I'll walk home. And whilst walking home, I will say to myself, if he so decides, then if the whole world goes against me as witness, nothing will happen. Mm -hmm. But if he so decides, that, then if the whole world stands in defense of me, nothing will happen. I'll have to bear the punishment. Mm -hmm. But then I would say to myself, you know, walking home, I, these thoughts would come to my mind. Mm -hmm. And I would say to myself, but why should he interfere? What have I done that way? He should take any interest in me. <clears throat> My approach to him had been uh, very casual. Mm, worse than casual. Mm -hmm. like that. Though I was born in a family mm, like that. Many times of the ship also I would have had thoughts that uh, just because my family has accepted him as God, I say he's God. Supposing I had been born in a family that had accepted this uh, Osho mm -hmm. as God, then I would have said, parrot, like a parrot, I would say, oh, Osho is God. Mm -hmm. That makes no sense like that. Mm -hmm. so but then the, these thoughts came to my mind. Then once in a while I would go to Baba's room. Our house in Pune is very close to Baba house. Yeah. And I would bow down. And there, Beloved Baba's sister parent, uh, sister-in-law, mm -hmm. Baba's brother, Dehram's wife. Mm -hmm. She asked me, Sam, what has happened about your case? I said, nothing, ma'am. They just gave me date after date mm -hmm. and uh, nothing happens. By that time now it is nearly 84. Two years, mind mm -hmm. you. Uh, that bloody tension on my mind also. Mm -hmm. Then she told me, you do one thing. Next time you go to the court, wear a Baba button and go. Mm -hmm. Uh, as I told you, my approach was very, very casual. And I did not like, you know, wearing a button might be something like showmanship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I decided. And sure enough, the things began to move. Mm -hmm. The hearing took place. The first witness was called. The judge was an elderly lady, about 55 or so. Yeah. Very, very decent woman. Uh, you could see from her face that she is not correct. Mm -hmm. And she asked that man, are you an eyewitness? He said, no. Mm -hmm. Then she said, why are you here? And he said, I am the son of the business. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And the judge said, do you want to make any claims? And he said, no. Mm -hmm. He was very old and we had often told him not to go alone outside, but he wouldn't listen. Mm -hmm. And we have no claim on him. Wow. Now his working began. Mm -hmm. Then the next date was given. Again, I was there. Another witness was Police had get, got together seven witnesses because they had to build up a case, yeah. you know. So <laughs> this man was put in that witness box and the prosecutor, she also was a lady, began to question him. And the man was fumbling and the judge lost her patience and she said, you shut up, I'll, I'll question. <laughs> and the first question she put to him was, are you an eyewitness to this? <laughs> He's looking. That man was as stupid as me. <laughs> Thank God that he was as stupid as me. Shut up! He blurted out. No. I'm no 
my witness, but the police told me that I should oh, say things okay. like that. Oh. You know, and that changed the whole <laughs> a lot. The whole uh, outlook of the case changed. And the judge was angry. Get out of that court. And you're performing perjury or whatever you call it. So a waste of her time. Sure. Then she said, <laughs> Next day, she passed the judge. And that is how it got over. And the judgment came in my favor. Mm -hmm. That it was not a question of rash driving. Yes. The man himself is elderly. He is not one of the stunt drivers. Yeah. Secondly, he did not run away, according to the police. Yeah. He took the man to the clinic and gave his address. Yeah. And thirdly, because of his age, the, and no rest driving. There was no question of speeding or anything like that. So that was over. And then I suddenly realized that things happened. And I said to myself in my heart of heart that if now I remove my beloved's bucket, no one could be more ungrateful and dirty than me. So now I said, whether I am going anywhere or everywhere, I will not move out of my house without uh, mm -hmm. a baba mm -hmm. like that. Yes, please. That was the turning point. Yes. Yes. That was the turning point. Okay. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> it was during that period that uh, it, it was now nearly the month of October. I do not know what happened, but one night when I was sleeping, something happened, as my brother Eric would put it, that alarm that my beloved set in my heart, that rang. And from that day, I accepted my beloved completely. Then I would never go out of the house without his button. I would constantly remember him. Things like that. Then uh, things went on like that. Then uh, in the year 95, this is my jingo over here. His mother, Cinderella, very beautiful dog, a white palm. Someone stole her work, she went missing. And I'm very, very close, at, uh, very deeply attached to my dog. As a matter of fact, uh, someone asked me this question. To whom do you attribute the sudden change in your life? And he, was, and he was expecting me to answer that my beloved did it. And he was shocked and surprised when I said, it was my brownie who did it. My very first dog. Because it was from her that I learned what total unconditional love is. Yes. But still I was drifting. Mm -hmm. Then, uh, 95, my Cinderella went missing. 96, we were called to America by Baba Rabbi. You know, for Baba's story. And then, Roshan stayed there for quite some time. But I came back early. And uh, I, as soon as I arrived in India, then I Came in the meantime, 91 we had purchased this land mm -hmm. and that building of the house had be begun. Mm -hmm. And uh, then for a revival, the construction was stopped. So my cousin brother Mehman, Erich's younger brother, mm -hmm. asked me, sir, how is the work going? And I said, Mehman, uh, we have stopped the work for the present because of finances. Mm -hmm. And I said, in a way, I'm glad that it is like that because my mother refuses to move into this house unless there is someone staying with her. And he said, no, don't stop the work. Now since the work is moving in good rhythm, continue. And he, my brother, helped me financially, which then eventually we paid back to him. And this house was completed in, uh, in 93. Beloved Baba's money and the monthly had come for housewarming and all that. Then uh, 96 I came and since the house was ready, I shifted over here permanently. And uh, in the meantime, Roshan had now switched over to making school uniforms in Puna. In school uniforms, you know, one school in Puna. Mm -hmm. A real big institute with more than 2,000 odd students working there. And uh, studying their daughter. And by Baba's grace, we were doing very well. So, this, the construction of this house was thanks mainly to Russian earnings from the school work, uniform work. And uh, she had, uh, I don't know what you Americans call it, we call them stocks, stocks and shares. Yeah. 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 You, you call them scripts? Yeah. Stocks. No, stocks. Stocks, stocks. 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 and shares. Yeah. Yeah. So her maternal uncle had given her uh, share, uh, share, 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 
of a company called ITC, Indian Tobacco Company. And that company was flourishing. It's still flourishing even today. And the official, the market value of the share was 10 rupees. Mm. It had gone as high as 670, wow. 700. Wow. And Roshan sold those. Good, good uh, sir. And from that money, we completed the loan of law. Mm. And then I began to stay. And at that time, I was staying all alone. Then my brother Dadi was staying in that room over there, where Gary and all are staying, uh, near to the service teacher. Then uh, eventually Roshan also began to take the strain of that school uniform work. Things were not going very smoothly. So again, from the earnings of the school, again selling more of the Indian tobacco company shares, mm -hmm. we got financing and we built up a story. Mm -hmm. With the idea, it is the same like now in Bilo, four bedrooms with bathroom, toilet, and bed. The idea was that Baba lovers, especially with children mm -hmm. who are not permitted to stay in the children center, mm -hmm. they could stay there. Mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. So that would be a sort of earning for us. And by that time, we had our capital built up, the interest from that and all. So now by Baba's case, you know, mm -hmm. things are going very smoothly. God will take care of you. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I will say, not only take care, but uh, being perfection personified. Mm -hmm. Even that is perfect. I have noticed many a times, moment the cost of living rises, we will make sure that our income is in power. Mm -hmm. Always. Always. So Sam, um, in the early days when you actually saw Bob, <coughs> when you were in his company, you, you said your approach to him was quite casual at that time. No, no, no. no. Surprisingly enough, in his presence, I was all for him. Yeah. I was all for him. I don't know how long that happened. Maybe it was because of that, because of something that he saw in me, that he took care of me. There I was, as a matter of fact, I remember, I would be sitting you know, along with Erech and others in the Monday hall, and the strict orders were that uh, no one should touch my feet. And all the time, I would never look at him. Because for the basic reason that I was afraid to look at <laughs> Baba, yeah. Because I knew I was in the presence of one man who knows thoroughly well what yeah. utter shit I am. <laughs> so I would always be like that. Because before looking down, my uh, glance would always be at his feet. And I would always tell myself in my heart of heart, who the hell told you that you should touch his feet? You can bow down to his feet from this distance. Also. All that time I would do it. Wow. Then uh, one occasion he gave me orders uh, 54 that uh, I should not have any relationship with any woman mm -hmm. except my wife. Roshan and I we were not married that time. But I should have no relationship with any woman at all. You know that is a basic problem with all sailors. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. So he, would, he gave me that order. Mm -hmm. Now whenever he gave me the parting embrace before I would go to the ship, my brother is standing there, I would feel ashamed. So, but I knew that he knows me. So while embracing, I would say to myself in my heart, Baba, this is one order I cannot carry out on my own. You will have to help me with that. I, know, I knew that he is hearing me. Yeah. Maybe I'm not speaking loudly, no. but he's hearing he hear you, me. Yes. And he did. Physically, after that, I never uh, gave up. So much so that <laughs> when I began to work for the Greeks, uh, for Greeks, that is the that is the only place they land up in, and the Greeks they were my very good friends. That, that, that was one European community I saw who had no color consciousness whatsoever. Mm. The Greeks, mm. and like us Indians, they had suffered slavery also. Mm. The Greeks were under the domination of the Turks yes. for 450 years. Yes. So they they, they, they were, yes. uh, I was like, <coughs> by his grace somehow that I could get along with one and all. So they had great love and pity for me. Mm -hmm. Poor chap, Marconi. We are known as Marconi's on the ship. Yeah. He's important. <laughs> <laughs> because he could not go with them. And they would all have said, Go doctor, good doctor. <laughs> Here I was trying to take you to doctor. I said, No, thank oh, you. Thank you. <laughs> now, how could I tell them that it is my master's orders? Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. So you, you were a sailor? 
I was a merchant, but and even that was uh, because of my beloved. Fishman. Beloved Baba. No, I was a Baba's operator in merchant. Oh, right. Marconi. 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 That, we were known as Marconi, sir. Yeah. Because Marconi was the one who invented this uh, Morse and all that. And um, did you. Uh, I'm half Greek, and the Greek side of my family, they own ships. What Greek company did you work for? I worked for two of them. Halkusis. Halkusis. Al Halkusis. No, they were small company. And the other one was uh, for Kenya. <coughs> when it comes back to you. But I'll tell you one thing. They were very good pay masters. Mm. And uh, as I said, I enjoyed my uh, life with them. Mm. And uh, they had taken me to the cave of uh, Socrates. Mm. And uh, because they eventually they realized that I had a liking for all such things. Mm -hmm. And I asked them, I wanted to visit that cave. They took me there. Yes. And that cave had a gate over it now. Mm -hmm. And I said, how come we can't go inside? And they told me that unfortunately, the youngsters do not pay really respect to this cave. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. boys and girls inside have relationships yeah. there. And the, People did not like it. Oh. <coughs> Relationship is one thing, but discarding certain things yeah. in that game yeah. was the height of uh, disrespect oh, the great master. Great. Oh, yeah. Greeks were considered Socrates as a philosopher, yes. but in the Sufi uh, tradition. tradition, he is accepted as one of the masters. Oh, wonderful. Socrates is a master, he is not a philosopher. Mm -hmm. And uh, on two occasions, he showed his, uh, the, the mastery that was in him. When Plato arranged his escape mm -hmm. and he said, Master, everything is arranged, tonight we run away. And he said to Plato, never break the rules and laws of the country, mm -hmm. same like our beloved. <coughs> and he says to Plato, Plato, I am not afraid to die, mm -hmm. for intentionally or unintentionally, I have never harmed any living being. Mm -hmm. Only a great master could say that. That's true. That's true. And another, Plato came from an aristocratic family and he had built a mansion with nearly 100 rooms, a huge palace really? thing. Uh, so he says to the master, you know, to do the opening like. And Socrates said to him, Plato, how many rooms? 100 rooms, master. <laughs> and uh, Socrates said, given one instant in time, how many rooms can you occupy? <laughs> and he said, only one master. Well, then the 90 time, 99 rooms are not existing. Why then did you build them? <laughs> and then Plato realized it. Uh, These are the ways that the Master teaches us. Yeah. Yeah. But these words are very beautiful. Yeah. Intentionally or unintentionally, I have never harmed any living thing. And he did drink that poison. <coughs> Always that way of teaching is very, very simple. Mm -hmm. Yes. I forget the name of that master. But a certain king built a castle high up on the mountain. Very strong and sturdy castle with the minarets touching the sky and all. And when the castle was completed, he invited all the subjects to see the beauty of that castle. And the crowd, you know, who and ah and all and that. <laughs> and the king says to the people, the subjects. This castle is built so very strong that it will protect each and everyone staying in that castle from any calamities <coughs> that come over. Mm. And then we, <sighs> but in that beautiful who and ah, the king suddenly heard a very derisive laughter. And the king was angry. So who the hell is this <laughs> laughing like that in a vulgar manner? And so the old man, hey, come here, come here, why did you laugh like that? And he said to the king, O king, all calamities descend from the heaven to the earth. And like a bloody fool, you have gone halfway high to meet it. <laughs> <laughs> that is why I laugh at your stupidity. And the king realized. That idea is nothing but to break our ego. And that is why in Sufi tradition it is always emphatically stated till such time that you have not totally annihilated yourself, 
Never declare to the world that you are a lover of God. Yes. Because that would be an outright lie. Yes. That's Erich took that very, very literally. Yeah, he did. Well, yeah, everyone yeah. 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 Well, Erich was very explicit about about making that point. Yeah. 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 I'm sorry, I missed that. He, it, not, to, not to talk about your love for God, because unless you're annihilated, if you're there, then love for God is not there. Oh, I see. You, you have to be annihilated. That means uh, that my false self, yeah. the self which I call Sam, <coughs> has to go. And beloved Baba has given us a very beautiful discourse on that. Many people in the early years would say, if their Baba is God, then at least they should keep his mouth shut about it. <laughs> Expressing it that I am God shows his ego. Mm. And Baba said, no, it is not so. Mervan Sharia Iran is completely annihilated. So who remains? Only God. Uh -huh. That is my true humility, my infinite humility. Yeah. Actually, the ego is on my side. That I, knowing my beloved, still say, Sam Keravala is present. By saying I'm not God. No. The, re the reality is that I should completely, you know, eradicate myself. Mm -hmm. Only then, when this is gone, what remains? Only God. Mm -hmm. And that is the height of true humility. <coughs> and and I used to say, when I, uh, when I go, you come. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the, the yoga. Yeah. Yoga, you go. You go. You go. <laughs> and Baba said, to further explain this point, by saying about true humility. Now supposing you ask me, who am I? Would it be true humility on my part if I said, Oh, I'm just a small sparrow sitting on a tree. Immediately you think, Oh my God, what do I can land up with such bloody idiots in my life? <laughs> <laughs> that is not true humility. I'm Sam, I'm a human being. It's my heart. I say, I am a sparrow sitting on a tree, chirping like a bird. That is not humility. So also, when he knows that he is God himself, that is his humility when he declares that I am God. Finished. Yes. That is what he is. Finished. Yes. No questions asked. Yes. Isn't that in a sense what, why God is going to be buried alive? Because you declare yourself? Oh, uh, no. And they, they cannot go with yeah. the Muslims and you yeah. say, uh, couldn't accept that? Or? Many, many of them. Yes, yeah. I mean, many it's many a small part of the Sufi tradition. Mansur Allah, yes. He was killed in the most horrible manner. <coughs> yes. What was that? Mansur Raj, a Sufi master, he declared that same thing, an al -haq, which means I am the truth. And in Muslim you cannot say that. You cannot say that. Then that's a blasphemy. That means you have equated yourself to Allah. Mm -hmm. So how, how do you think, that's an interesting point, how, how do you think that is going to adjust itself. Because at some point in time, the millions and millions of yes. Muslims have to come to our They will come, yes, of course. Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, you might be very pleased to know, already a trickle has begun. Mm -hmm. I'm told that yesterday, Ramzan Eid, they are their Eid, they are fasting. And a large number of people came. And they, you Okay. Just take a seat next to no, Sam. No, no. Oh, okay. 
And I saw them there. I didn't know who they were. You know, I thought I was waiting. I came in the evening, but by that time they had all that. But there are a couple of young people who are in the audience. They're not 25, 26 years old. Educated people. They were there yesterday all. I just thought that. Go into the samadhi, and uh, they stand there, bow down, but they throw their hands before him and then walk out. Yeah. But even this is more than enough. Yes. More than enough. It's slowly to come out. I have to tell you something, you know, wishful speaking on my part, but I think I'd agree of, of, of certain possibilities that when Baba deems it his will to release the films about the Pranashram. Especially that Sayyid Ali Muhammad yeah, yeah, yeah. and Abdullah, all these great Muslim names, um, you know, was, especially Ali being that he represented the hero and, and the link to the boys. So when when young Muslim children, um, youth see um, and, and accept. Ali's love for the master. I, I, I think it's fair to 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 assume that that because Baba works for the entire cosmos, yeah. that it you know that this it can significantly be part of how yeah. Islam yeah. turns to Baba. Yeah. Because the foundation is laid. Yeah, because. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, I love it that, that Ramju wanted to document the uh, paranormal activities that were happening, and he knew that if he asked Baba, that Baba would, wouldn't allow it. And then that Baba called him and ordered him to, to write the adventures of Ali. I mean, it was like, he was really like setting it up so that the world, when he deems it necessary, will get to experience this, yeah. uh, uh, as Raju called this crack lover's uh, yeah. love for Baba. I mean, uh, and, uh, and he came to the West, he was the link to the West as well. Yeah. That young one? Yes. He had come to the West? Yes, he was going, yes. Know, yes. Know, yeah, not, yeah. Just the, not just the book, not just the link at the school, but the link to the West as well. Yeah, amazing. And all this will definitely happen. Oh, because in the Quran, Muhammad himself has declared that after the 14th century Islamic, I see no future of Islam. And that 14th century Islamic ended in the year 1985. Mm. And that stated in the Quran? In the Quran itself. In really? Uh, mm. that, that I see no future of Islam after the 14th century Islamic. And that is why the mullahs, the priest class, took a gallop and they were frightened. Yeah. So now this, you know, that fanaticism, unfortunately, <coughs> now they are trying to preserve something which is already there. Yeah. Not, mm -hmm. not the true Islam, no, no, no. the Islam that the priests are doing. Yeah. Yes. Muhammad had declared it that after the 14th century, mm -hmm. I see no future of Islam. Wow. Yeah, yeah all of these boys, I mean, Abdullah Prophet one also, children of Allah. I mean, there were there were very significant Muslim boys yes, at the yes, school, yeah. and uh, I got to meet him. I got to meet Shodabad uh, in in Iran and Bandarabas. Mm -hmm. He was a beautiful man. He was very simple. He mm -hmm. worked for the Iranian Red Cross. Mm -hmm. Shodabad, Shodabad, Abdullah Parkhorn. Uh, yeah, he was he, he was the boy that Baba raised to and, uh, for the short period of time on the sixth plane. Right. Yeah. Very simple man. Oh. My heard you wrote a letter of introduction uh, that he uh, gave me to Unfortunately, you. during my seafaring days, I've been to Bandar Abbas, Bandar Shahpur, mm -hmm. Abadan, Kuransha. But uh, as usual, I said, you know, my I So what? Yeah. And that was uh, Yes. And. Uh, those days there was one American by the name of Ludwig Dimple mm -hmm. from San Francisco. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Love him, love he was on a very high post in some oil company of America and he was in Abadan. 
-hmm. working for the Anglo American Air Force. And my ship was loading aviation cancer mm -hmm. for some ports, I don't know where, now. Mm -hmm. And I swam on the jet. Mm -hmm. And I looked, I met him here. Mm -hmm. uh, this man looks very like he's a Bangalore. So I ran down the gangway, I said, excuse me, sir. <laughs> yeah. You're Mr. Lovely Dimitri, but yeah. Then I said, I'm Sam Kerala, you may not know me, because in the crowd, you might have hardly noticed me. Mm -hmm. But uh, my only source of reference was, you're Mr. Lovely Dimitri, but yeah. Then I said, I'm Sam Kerala, you may not know me, because in the crowd, you might have hardly noticed me. But my only source of reference was, that I happened to be cousin of Hedit Jasala. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they embraced and all that. I took him on the ship. <laughs> and then from that day, every morning, we both of us would have breakfast, uh, Oh, uh, both of us together. Those connections, yeah. uh, and we don't even dream of them. Yeah. Last, uh, <laughs> no last year, I discovered that Lud Dimfold is my, my great-grandfather in Baden. Let me tell you what I mean. His daughter was 3B. Right. 3B's best girlfriend when she was a little girl. I forgot her name now. The name doesn't come back to me. If I told you the name, you've heard it. She was the roommate of my cousin in a girls' school. Mm -hmm. My cousin's uh, mother, who was my aunt, came to visit her at the school and saw on that girl's night table a book by Meher Baba. Mm -hmm. My aunt picked up the book and opened to the front page, saw the picture, and immediately she was his. Uh, the next week she went to Myrtle Beach, and two months later she met Baba at the 1962 Tarsa. <laughs> the following year she came back, and you know she was telling the family about, and I accepted it. Mm -hmm. uh, and you for, were only 11. I was 11 years old. <laughs> she took me to Myrtle Beach, and you know, but it was only relatively recently that I understood the chain of events, mm -hmm. and that it was Love Dinful's daughter, who, who, whose best friend was my cousin's roommate. And I, I thought it would be so interesting if each person knew the, the lineage, uh -huh. you know, how they... The link. Yeah. The link. Yeah. Yeah. About this link, <laughs> Dilavid Baba has given us a beautiful story. <clears throat> yeah, this is again a story by Dilavid Baba himself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That uh, a rich businessman would... Uh, no, no problem. A rich businessman, you know, would be always engrossed in his business. And, uh, Weekend, he would go to the forest area, roam around, you know, that was his only source of peace of mind. That was very common for him, but to his utter surprise, one night, it became dark very early. And though he was well conversant with the whole thing, he lost his way. He tried to find his way out, he couldn't find it. In the dark of the night, he saw a very small lamp burning in the distance, so he went there. And he saw a hut and an old man sitting there, and he said, Excuse me, sir, but I've lost my way. Do you mind if I spend my time here with you? Sit down. And he offered him some bread and water and all that. Made him comfortable and, you know, mm -hmm. the typical style of conversation. Nothing important, but everything is important. Mm -hmm. What do you do? Mm -hmm. I'm a businessman. Mm -hmm. And then he, he began to narrate his problems, business problems. Uh -huh. And to his utter surprise, this old man who had never seen the world, was solving this problem. What <laughs> is going on? How does he know? <laughs> then he was very happy that his problems were solved. And he left next morning. And he said, thank you, sir. Went home, again got engrossed in his business. Month passed by. But the, the link had been made. So now the master was pulling him. Yeah. And again he came. And this time he said, <laughs> deliberately, approached that old man late at night. And the old man said, you lost your way again. He said, he did he had none, but yes, I did. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gave him food and water, again the same thing. Then he went back. But now, that desire to spend more and more time with that old man kept on increasing. Mm -hmm. Till one fine day he called his family and he said, to hell with this bloody business. <laughs> you run it. I'm through. And he left. And he went to that old man. And he said, I'll come. No, but I'll come now to stay permanently with you. <laughs> and then next morning he said, now that you're here permanently good, I'm very old and free. <laughs> and the masters, they are working. 
take care of the garden, grow some vegetables so that we both can eat something like that. And, he, and in the night he would press the feet of the master. He didn't know that he is a master. Uh, and like that years passed and slowly and steadily a change began to come in that man. His mind and heart drifted away from the world. And one fine day there was nothing left in him except the feet of his master. Ah, mm. oh, beautiful. And then that moment came and the master gave him enlightenment. And after that the master, this is beloved Baba narrating this story. After that the master told him that that night it was not you who lost the day. I made you lose it. <laughs> because many, many years ago, you and I were two pet dogs in a very rich family in Egypt. Very rich Egyptian family. We were pet dogs of that family. Wow. And we were friends. The link was when you and I were animals. Oh my God. Oh, wow. huh? Look at the length of time. <clears throat> the whole evolution, reincarnation. <clears throat> Wow. That link was there. And because of that link, I was duty bound to bring you to my level. Wow. And that, that is how it happened. Wow. wow. That's good. Wow. Liam, when did Ali come to the United States? 1931. Yeah, Baba. With Baba? Yes. With Baba. Oh. Yeah, they came to England first. Pardon? They came to, 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 to London first. They were actually very caught in France, I think. Yeah, yeah. And so we knew that. Have you ever heard the story that Judy told us yesterday about Baba coming to uh, the United States on September the 11th? And yes, yes. On, yeah. on U.S. soil, 758. Oh, no. 1931, September 11th. It was November. November. It was November 18th. November 18th. Well, when did she say September 11th? Yesterday. Um, he went when 70, 70 years when he went in the boat left from France. In France? It was in France. In Marseille, I think. I mean. Uh, and then they, they took the channel, the channel train, the channel train, whatever, Good. whatever the hell they traveled in those days. That was, I, I, yeah, I do remember it was September. So, so, it, so it was seven years. And she was, she was equating that when the first plane hit the first building, uh -huh. that, that, that was seven years to the day, to the moment of Baba. Uh, um, arriving in Europe. Oh, in Europe for the first time. Yeah. But, it, but she said when they left, was it when they left New York? He told Eric to turn and look at the skyline. Mm -hmm. And that one day those buildings would fall like this uh, house of car, a deck of cars. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Baba said to turn around and look at New York. This is all going to fall off like a pack of cards. It's not Jesus said the same thing when they booed and awed at the temple in Jerusalem. Take a good look because not one stone will be left on another. Uh, but you know, I'm in my heart, I always want to be very careful uh, before I equate anything that the Master says yes. with historical events. No. Because I feel that we get into so much trouble doing that. Yes. Uh, Muslims, Jews, and Christians are attacking each other all the time because they think that the culmination of their religion will be borne out in human history and that history has to turn out a certain way in order for their faith <clears throat> to be fulfilled. And I think this is one of the causes of the strife between them instead of looking within, they want to, they want to fulfill their spirituality in the historical dimension with a kind of historical triumphalism. Mm -hmm. And so even though Baba has said many things like that, mm -hmm. I, I always want to try to understand in the inner way mm -hmm. rather than in, in a literal historical way. What do you feel about yes, it? Is like, yes. Main thing we have to pay attention to is uh, the hints that he has given us. Mm -hmm. Like for instance, once Baba said that when I, when I came as Jesus, that time I cried out on the cross, Father forgive them for they know not what they do. This time I'm crying out 
God have pity on them. Imagine the condition of us all now. Mm. God have pity on them, for they know not what is going to happen. Yeah. And the world is now taking that very drastic turn. <coughs> Baba said that. This time I am cr crying out, God have pity on them, for they know not what is going to happen. Wow. And we are fast approaching that time. Yeah. Today, none of the human values are left in any human heart. Mm -hmm. And uh, I have come to the conclusion that the whole bloody world has gone mad. <laughs> this is the only sane spot left here. Mm -hmm. The only sane spot left here. I mean, uh, during my seafaring days I have never heard the word terror or terrorist. Today you can't live without those two words. Mm -hmm. And where is the act of bravery, where is the act of achievement yes. when a man rushes into a dark room where innocent people are fast asleep and mows them down with a machine gun? Where lies your bravery? Where lies what is, what is it? I do not understand all this. Madness. 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 I think we have to try in our hearts mm -hmm. to reach out to those people and somehow try to understand them. I am quite happy reaching out to my animals. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It gets to that point. Well, because of course but, they feel the same way about us. They say, no, I shouldn't bother anymore trying to reach out to him or to understand him. So I, I'll go down best, with the machine gun. One of the best jokes I, about animals I'm married to you, and uh, you will love it also. Okay. A dog was sitting by the roadside and crying as if his heart was broken. And a Sufi master passing by said to him, Son, why are you crying, crying like that? Well, well, what has happened? And he said, I had a fight with my wife. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a very common thing. Why should you cry like that? <laughs> no, but she abused me, Master. <laughs> so, uh, no, no, so what? No, she went beyond limits. Yeah. What happened? She called me a human being. <laughs> <laughs> Which reminds me of a little story about the Pasni, of this uh, husband and wife. Uh, she had the husband had gone to take her to Pasni's darshan, and uh, he came back, and the wife said to him, Well, did he beat you? And he said, No, he said, You better go back. <laughs> <laughs> but this is, a, this is a fact, and this story of a Pasni. Uh, a certain family were very closely uh, devoted to Upasri Maharaj and then a beautiful young daughter. And she got married to, <coughs> you know, in India marriage is a normally arranged marriage. Mm -hmm. And she got married to a man whose family did not accept Upasri Maharaj. But because the wife insisted, the husband accompanied her. And uh, then Upasri Maharaj is Darshan and then Upasri took him to a corner and said, here, take one rupee. And tonight go to the red light district and spend your night there. And he took a gallop. Mm -hmm. And he said, pull his wife and come on, we are going home. Uh. And never again you must see this man. He said, okay. Poor thing, she couldn't help it, but she was missing a mark. Mm -hmm. And eventually a time came and a girl was born. And she grew up. But her character was such mm. that uh, she was more fit for the red light district mm -hmm. than being a family girl. Mm -hmm. And that girl totally ruined the name and reputation of that family. Mm -hmm. And uh, the whole society now shunned them. And their husband was even depressed and all. The wife now tells him, at least once let us go and see Upasi Maharaj, what harm? So they went. And then Upasi Maharaj said, sit down, sit down, mm -hmm. I know everything. And then he looked at that young man and said, You took me to be a bloody fool, didn't you? Mm. I told I gave you a rupee. I told you go to that particular spot. If you had gone there, that particular seed was meant for that area. Mm. And you would have spent that seed there. Mm -hmm. But you didn't do it. So it came to your house. Mm. Oh, wow. This is how the master was. Oh, oh, my God. God. If, if you had gone there, mm. She would have been born in an environment that was normal and typical for her. Right. Yeah. But you not doing that, 
That's why, uh, you know, when a master gives an order, it is best to carry it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, isn't there another story uh, that Baba, similar in a similar vein, told a man to to go to to a brothel yes, yes, ah, yes, ah, to get drunk. And yes, yes, yeah, it was a beautiful me. story. Oh, please, please yes, tell the story. Yes. This man came to deliver Baba and said, "I want to, uh, you know, I want to realize God." Mm. And Baba said, "Good." You are one of the rare ones who came to ask me for that. <laughs> Most of them, he's being set up whenever Baba says that. Most of them always come for you. He's in the soup. Five children, this, that and what not. Mm. So now I'll give you orders to carry out. You do that and I, I promise you, I'll show you God. I'll make you realize God. And he said, Baba said to him, from, you are a Brahmin. He said, yes. Now from today, he will start eating non-vegetarian food. Mm drink, mm. womanize, do everything. And Erich in his own university would say that when Baba was saying that I was thinking to myself, why didn't he say that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, we get the inside story. <laughs> <laughs> because here is God literally offering this man, yes. God in a golden platter. Yeah. And he's insisting, no Baba, I'm very serious, please be serious with me. And Baba said, I'm serious with you. Do this. I promise you, I'll show you God. I'll make you God realize. He didn't listen to me. Then Baba said, okay, then you do one thing. Visit all the important shrines in India. You know, pay respect to all of them. Mm -hmm. Do that. Ah, now that was exactly what yes. he had yeah. 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 So he began. And during the course of travel, he came across this so-called Indian sadhus. You know, the people who have renounced the world, right. Right? whose one job is to waste their life uh, in drugs. Oh. Uh, you know, we call them chillum, you know, the smoking. Oh, smoking uh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. No, that is no, that no. Is only is, uh, no water. No water. Yeah. It is, it is basically like heroin or cocaine. Yeah. Uh, little and then they... He began, he fell in the company of those people. So, now he became a drug addict. Oh. From that he switched on to alcohol also. Then from alcohol the next step to going to a woman was very, very easy for him. In short, he did everything that was possible. Beloved Baba now goes to the West and Eraj and Pendu are sent all over India to talk about Baba. Mm -hmm. And in that particular place, <coughs> Eraj remembered that man. Mm -hmm. oh. And he asked the local people, shh, they told him, shut up, keep quiet, come on you. Keep talking about Baba. <laughs> and Erich was a bit hurt. What is wrong with these people? I'm inquiring about this man and they're telling me to shut up and all. <laughs> so when the whole thing was over, Erich said, What is wrong? I'm just asking about. Are you don't know that? He's become the worst bloody scoundrel in the world. <laughs> He's drug addict, drinks, womanizes, eats meat, fish, this, that. He does everything that should not be done. Again, the typical notion of what God meant. Uh, it should be like it. <laughs> and Erit then realized it. Many years later, when this matter was brought to Beloved Baba, Beloved Baba said this, had he done what I told him to do, then the entire responsibility would have been mine. Mm. He would have committed the acts, but the responsibility would have been mine. Mm. And the impression no, would have no been mine. No binding, no yeah. impression would have been there. Mm. But because he did it on his own, he got bound in it, mm. and he is now totally lost. Oh. So Baba, as the master, knew that it was somehow in yeah, his fate. It, huh? it was in his destiny. It was his fate to commit those acts. Huh? He had to and he was offering all him a way out of all the life. All that, yeah. Oh my God. Those particular <coughs> sanskaras were to be spent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So oh. he could save him from the destruction. Oh, that's amazing. Sam, could you uh, recount a couple of incidents of Baba's humor? Uh, well, one of them has happened to me personally. Ah, that's oh. good. <laughs> 1954. Uh, I began my sea career working for a British company. I joined uh, my sea life, began my career in the year 1950. 54, uh -huh. I came back to India and Baba called me to Satara, another place in Maharashtra. And as I just told you before, in his presence I would always sit down like that, yeah. never look at him. <laughs> So that is, that is, that was the time when our marriage portion and my marriage was discussed also. Mm -hmm. That's a different story. So I looked up 
And he said to me, do you know me, Sam? So I said, of course, Baba, I know you. <laughs> I didn't know that he was pulling my legs. <laughs> then he turns to Eres and big giant sitting around him and said, see, you all have spent 30 and 40 years at my feet and you do not know me. <laughs> Sam came day before yesterday from Puna. And he knows. <laughs> 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 oh, beautiful sense of you. And another one, then we must depart because okay. we have to go to the Samadhi. Oh, okay. Baba's humor. Again, I was home on leave. And Baba, we were all sitting at Baba's feet. And Baba's glance <laughs> fell on me. And he says to the crowd there, that time we were nearly 25, 28 people in the monthly hall. And Baba says, you know this sir, he works for a British company, good pay. Mm -hmm. But the bloody miser would never put his hand in his pocket. <laughs> Today he will make sure he has spent money. And at that time there was a movie, Laurel and Hardy movie running <laughs> in a, a theatre called New Empire. It was just a tin shed built by the Britishers for the British Army during the Second World War. But then after they left it continued. So Baba said, Shan will take us all to the, see this Laurel and Hardy. <laughs> so we all trooped in. And the last two seats were taken. The last seat, after that there is the wall. And I'm, we are sitting there, I'm, I'm occupying one chair, and right ahead of me is beloved Baba Neeraj sitting. Oh. And then the movie began. And Laurel and Hardy is a type of movie that a child of 6 to 96 will enjoy. Yes. Yes. And we were all you know, engrossed in that, enjoying it. And suddenly my glance fell on Baba. He gave Neeraj a nudge. Again, as soon as his work is over, he won't stay. That Laurel and Hardy and all, that is only an excuse. Yeah. Yeah. The main thing is his work. Yeah. I love the gesture. Oh, it's so, yeah. it's so... Poke in the wrist. And, yeah. So, that's so, what we do now, right? Yeah. Yeah. Poke in the wrist. Yeah. Yeah. Go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. also is enjoying the movie. Yeah. So half-heartedly he gets up and uh, I can uh, see uh, all this before. Uh, oh, 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 right in the right back of them. Oh, so he starts right. to stand yeah. up. Another five minutes and the movie will be over. Hmm? Is that so? Sit down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I just you like that. <clears throat> I do not know whether it was the command of God or it was bloody MSCB, Maharashtra State Electricity. <laughs> but the lights went off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we are sitting there and I am abusing MSCB. <laughs> One minute, two minutes. Baba again, Eraj. You want to wait or shall we go? Eraj, you Baba says. <laughs> Let us go, Baba. He would never allow the lights to come again. <laughs> oh, that's I'm funny. bloody sure that when we left, the lights must still come up again. That's funny. Oh, my God. Everything better. Okay, let's things. go. Wow. Thank you so much, yeah. Sam. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. 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 Thank you, Thank you, Sam. Thank you, so was that the three incredible the movies, movies right. and them. Baba had ordered me to remain for all the three weeks. One afternoon, you know, you know India, 3, 3.30 is the tea time. Mm -hmm. And that particular day, beloved Baba had asked for a Kamali program, you know, musical program. Mm -hmm. <coughs> and the whole congregation had gathered, beloved Baba was on a stage. And again, surprisingly, I was leaning against one of the poles that supports the Samya. And the Kamali people were singing there. And I'm leaning against that. On the stage is Beloved Baba and on this side are the people singing. Mm -hmm. And uh, these lines came up that if you cannot quench my thirst, the poet is uh, telling his Beloved, if you cannot quench my thirst, don't declare yourself to be ocean-hearted. Mm -hmm. He's talking about divine love. And I was interested. Mm -hmm. What will God give you? What response will yeah. be there from him? Mm -hmm. And he kept on repeating that line. Mm -hmm. And Baba said, proceed further with the song. But he kept on repeating. <laughs> if you cannot quench my thirst, don't declare yourself to be ocean. <laughs> but again, his perfection came in the way. Just at the precise moment, the man serving the tea reached the singer. Baba snapped his fingers, pin dropped silence. The man serving the tea looked at beloved Baba and Baba says, two cups. He's very thirsty. After all, you are dealing with God.
So funny. <laughs> Oh, Baba's stories are the best. Yeah, the best stories. They're so entertaining. Just to hear the real life story. In New York, where do you stay? In Bronxville. We're north of Manhattan, 18 miles north. You you stay at our house when you come. Very comfortable. It's a very nice, not, they have a very nice guest room. <laughs> Usually when I come, I go to New Jersey.